Uh, good morrow and welcome to Spark Tech Engineering. If you can dream it, we can build it. Uh, good morning. Uh, hello, I'm, I'm here on behalf of Crafting Monthly uh, uh, for Crafters by Crafters. Can I just confirm? Yeah, yeah, you, I'm sure you are. You're, you're that Totem Spartak, and you, you created that amazing self-aware construct. Ah, yes, I am he, and you must be meaning uh, my Bessie. Uh, yeah, I suppose in a manner of speaking, she is uh, self-aware. Good day, Mr. Spartak. I'm here representing Authentic Artisans, the go-to magazine for everything artisan. It is my understanding that you're not affiliated with any of the guilds. Is this true? I'm afraid it is. Um, unfortunately, the guilds decided my particular engineering and crafting skills are not desired within their halls. A shame, if I do say so myself. Imagine a world where dangerous tasks could be carried out without less risk to anyone involved, shall we say. Picture an army where maybe at least half of the soldiers could be created, repaired and sent back into battle without fear or loss of lives where, say, healers and medics could have a companion that could assist with the very difficult tasks without fear of contamination, immune to poisons, that don't need to sleep and never become exhausted. Unfortunately, guilds seem to lack the foresight for these endeavours, along with so many other applications and uses. Oh, maybe, maybe I can interject. So, what happened? You, are, you, are you happy with what's going on at the moment then? Adding to my colleague's question, what about prior to the departure? Also your youth, how was that spent? Abilities like yours hardly appear to be growing on trees. You must have studied and practiced somewhere. Mm, well, I suppose, mm, let's start at the beginning, shall we? So, born with very loving parents, uh, both skilled mages, shall we say? Um, they obviously expected me to follow in their footsteps. So by the time I was coming to the age when magical skills would normally start to manifest, I had nothing. Weeks went by without an inkling of magic, not even accidentally. Um, then weeks turned into months and months turned into years with no change. The children and other younglings began to whisper things about me. You know, whispers became rude and nasty comments and comments led turned into mockery which obviously you know made me a laughing stock i was the boy that couldn't cast the boy with no magic this obviously made things difficult for both myself and my parents um you know they, they tried everything they could uh, even consulted mages and specialists but it, it made no uh, difference so so so, uh, so so what happened after that then uh, I began to lock myself away from everybody else, really, hiding in my parents' uh, unused shed, surrounded by old dusty tools, equipment that had long since seen the light of day. There was that, you know, that I discovered in there my, you know, interest in design and craft. There I even say it, technology. Using their tools, you know, old toys, bits of scrap, anything I could find laying around, really, I was able to craft sort of rudimentary and simple items that could say move and, and and make sounds with time i managed to design and, and and build items that could record your voice or other sounds around you and, and play them back uh, copy images and, and highlight them and show them it was it was at this point you know with my newfound skills when they were discovered by my parents unfortunately they were not best pleased mainly due to the fact that i blew a hole in the side of their shed damaging the house in the process they, they weren't happy so if i understand correctly and please do forgive me if i'm wrong you exhibited no magical skill at all yet you were able to create magical effects in items toys and equipment <laughs> just seems a little far-fetched to me well i doesn't agree if this wasn't the case how could Tolton have crafted such a such a wonderful thing like that Constro Bessie, eh? Well, it was then that my parents decided that, you know, they'd, they'd send me off to the dwarves. One of the Smiths specifically, you know, to, to have an apprenticeship, shall we say. Thorgrim Stormhammer was his name. He was covered in scars. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget him. Burns and old wounds from battles, you know, combined with seasons of, of working in a forge. At first, it was it was quite unnerving and shocking. I, I did struggle with the constant routine. You know, I never got to rest, fixing and repairing, 
uh, making, infusing. What little time I had to myself was spent making notes from watching the other Smiths and artisans making plans, drawing and gathering ideas. This went on for several years, slowly improving my skills, and completing tasks set by the dwarves. Towards an, an, at the end of the, the apprenticeship, they, they automatically enrolled me into the guild as, as one of the crafters, you know, one of their own smiths. Um, while I was there, I created several key uh, uh, mechanisms and, and, you know, objects and items that it th did things like improve the mining, um, made it so that they could refine ore quicker and easier with uh, better returns, um, you know, construct items and, and that sort of thing. But my passion was always in my own creations, really. It was then that I, you know, there and then that I created Bessie. She took years to finish beautiful things. She is, uh, you know, piece by piece, she was built, altered, remodeled, changed, um, improved, shall we say, over time. Um, you know, obviously creating such a thing, I was excited to show all the other artisans and, and the members of the guild, you know, show off my skills, as it were. But you know, instead of instead of being happy with it, they you know, they they were shocked, very unhappy. They even disgusted. They threw me out of the city. You know, I was I was devastated, really, and heartbroken. All that work, all that effort, training, and and you know, it, it was just thrown in my face. I was treated like I was nothing more than a, a cheap charlatan. There, you know, there to steal their secrets and, and ideas. And thus, you ended up here. In this shop, selling your items, fixing and repairing broken equipment and uh, tools. Do, 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 do you intend to try and go back to the guild? Or is the plan to continue to build in your own, you know, emporium, like more shops? And things? Oh, well, to be honest, you know, I've, I've not looked that far into the future. You know, I might blow myself up tomorrow, you never know. Um, although, I, I won't lie, of course, you know, it'd be lovely to have the guilds, you know, come and see the benefit of all of these crafts and designs that I'm making. But, you know, maybe show them the error of their ways and you know, come groveling at my door. But unfortunately, you know, I can't see that happening. And, and that's not why I made Bessie, you know, or any of the other inventions or designs, you know. Plus, I'm just not that kind of known. Um, not to mention it's been years since I've seen anyone from my home, let alone my parents. You know, I've, not, I've not returned there after what happened. I'm a little bit embarrassed, to be completely honest with you. So, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to know what's going on with them and see how they are first and foremost. But right now, my, my plans are just to just to keep making and designing, crafting and, and see what comes from that. I can't promise that I won't make more shops, but it's not part of the agenda at the moment. You do have new designs and concepts then. You're not just a one-trick pony. Well, there's always something in the pipeline, shall we say. But, you know, those are things that you'll just have to wait and see and find out once they're made and ready. Well, indeed, we shall await with bated breath, I am sure, for whatever it is you may come up with next. And thank you for answering all of our questions, and good day, sir. Yeah, as, 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 my, as my colleague said, uh, thank you from all my readers. Uh, they'll be very interested in, in hearing more about your uh, your future endeavours. Oh, you're, you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. Um, while you're here, would you be interested in having a look at what else I've got in the shop? Maybe even you'd like to have a little look at Bessie, and, you know, she's got a saddle on her. You're more than welcome to have a ride around. Have a go on, Zonno. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely keeping me in for that one, but definitely. Uh, walk this way. Walk this way. She's just over here. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. So first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to Tolton's backstory. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. I'd also like to say a big, massive, huge thank you to both Neil Hara and Tanya King for making this video possible. The background, the recording, the putting it all together. Really do appreciate that, guys. Thank you very much. Um, I'd also like to point out, you know, that the God Heist live stream goes out weekly. Don't forget that. Uh, we're also posting up additional videos, reviews, information, and other bits and pieces. Um, so, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up to date with all of that content. And additionally, don't forget that the stream does go to podcast for those that find that easier to listen to and keep on top of. Thanks again to everybody, and we hope to see you soon.